Hello, where are you from? I'm from America, New Jersey. What's your ethnicity? Israeli. You're Israeli? I'm Israeli. Okay, what part of Israel are you from? Huh? What part of Israel are you from? My mom grew up in Haifa, and my grandpa lives in Modin right now. Where? My mom grew up in Haifa, and my grandpa lives in Modin right now. Okay, and what's your, what's your religion? Judaism. Okay, so what would you like to say about Israel-Palestine? What do you think I would like to say about Israel? Like, what are your tips? I don't assume anything. People, people never cease to amaze me on this live. What are your takes on it? I mean, when you get up here, you tell me your take. So what's your take? <laughs> I mean, my take is that what Hamas is doing is horrible. Age group, age group, TikTok friendly language, TikTok friendly language. All right, what age group is doing is horrible. I agree. I agree with age group. Well, I have a question because I was going to discuss this with a pro poly so I'll discuss this with an obviously pro visual person. There's some very disturbing um photos out there of that just came out and they come out every so often of idf soldiers being dis i'll put it nicely being disrespectful to religious articles and we all know the idf does not allow that but what are your thoughts on that i think that although it's wrong the idf soldiers are going through a lot so they have a big hatred towards those articles so I think they're just expressing what's on their mind. But don't you think that you can't blame, like, honestly, like, you can't blame a religion, like, you can't blame a religion, right? A lot of, yeah. of IDF soldiers don't blame Palestine. They blame H age group. They know that. Right, right. But the age group is an extremist group, right? It's, it's, it's like if someone were to disrespect a, a, a Jewish religious article because they blame Ben Gavir, right? I'm just, I'm just, not that he does things because of Judaism. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, right? I mean, there's no you, there's no excuse for that, right? It's horrible, it's despicable. There's no excuse for that, and and uh, and and the problem with the IDF, one of the problems with the IDF is that they don't punish these soldiers badly enough when they do these things, right? So it doesn't kind of like act as a deterrent for soldiers not to do these things, right? And and I know the IDF is totally against this kind of behavior, but I, I don't think they give them enough of a punishment because. I saw these videos and these pictures, and it, some of it involved like peeing and burning, and it's it's pretty it's pretty horrific. And I just want to say, like, we wouldn't want that done to our religious articles, um, and and we shouldn't do the, the those things to other people's religious articles, you know. So I just think it's it's pretty hard when people post that on their Instagram and they're like, "Haha, look what we did," you know, and it's it's a pretty bad PR look, you know. And, and I think, honestly, like, it saddens me that that's what it's come to, you know, at this point. I mean, yeah, it's sad, but at the same time, they, like, both sides do this. It's not like it's pinned on the IDF you know, it shouldn't That shouldn't be the excuse. It shouldn't be like, well, both sides do this, so that's okay. Nobody says it's okay. They definitely... I don't know if you know, but they definitely got punished. The IDF is extremely strict with their rules. Even if you didn't see it, in the background, they got something from it. They didn't just walk away freely if the IDF saw it. So. Well, I mean, all I know is that, like, it, it, it seems to be an ongoing problem because this is not the first time this has happened. And I just, I just know that, like, it's very, very bad PR for the IDF when this happens. And it goes viral when these things are found out. And it's just, it's a very, very bad look. And I just think, honestly, as someone who supports the IDF and sends pizza to them and advertises she sends pizza to them, like, it saddens me every single time this happens because as someone who tries to get other people to support the IDF, like, people say, well, what about this? And what about that? And I'm like, well, and I was telling them, you know, the IDF as an organization doesn't support this. But then people are like, well, look at all these soldiers who are doing this. What about that? And it's like, well, you know, how, how often, how, how, how many times can we say, well, it's just a random soldier, just a random soldier. 
you know, the IDF has got to start holding these soldiers accountable and start publicly saying how they've held these soldiers accountable. It's, okay. it's, 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 it's I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm saying I want to know how some of these soldiers have been held accountable because it's, it's really, there's too many of these rogue soldiers. Well, it's too extremely many of these rogue hard. They're doing rogue things that are just really, really just, just too rogue and too crazy. Well, that's it's also extremely hard for the IDF to account like to, to account every single soldier. Well, the thing the is, we literally have we literally have their names and their faces because the people who uncover these things like find out who they are. They have their names, their faces, the brigade they're part of. I mean, the people who are uncovering this, I actually know the reporter on on Twitter who I mean, he has all the information about the soldiers. So it's not like they don't know who they are. So the IDF can literally get the information literally off of Twitter. So I mean, and I'm sure the I'm sure the Israeli security people are following these 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 soldiers. I mean, these these journalists. I 100 percent I guarantee you they are because these 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 journalists are a major thorn in the in the in the in the, in the IDF side. So I just want to say that like there's plenty of information on who these IDF soldiers are. It's not like it's like some random soldier. They know exactly who the soldiers are. So I just think, honestly, like, I think that there needs to be some accountability. There, it's just getting to be too nuts at this point. It's getting to be, it's, 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 it was one thing when it was just like a few soldiers, but now it's like, it's, it's, it's just one after another after another. It's getting to be too many of them. In my eyes, they're emotionally distraught and that's how they're dealing with their Yeah, thing. but the thing about it is, is if, they're, if they're not emotionally capable, a fighting an ethical, correct war, then they need to be booted out of the idea. That's 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 the hill I'm gonna die on tonight. That's Andreas TED Talk. If you have too much PTSD, too much emotional trauma, too much whatever is going through your head, then you don't then you need to be then you need to be removed from your post. Which is hard if because you're, if you're gonna do what's what's literally equal to like war crimes. You're gonna be if you're gonna be unethical, then you don't need to be fighting in this war. You need posting, to be, posting something you on go, social. You need to go home. You need to go home. Posting something on social media isn't a war crime. That's number one. Number well, two. I'm sorry, but desecrating religious articles, dressing up in unalive people's lingerie, looting people's homes, okay, possibly blowing up things that you're not supposed to, you know, destroying red water reservoirs that you weren't supposed to, and a slew of other things is like possibly war crimes. So that being said, and again, those things weren't sanctioned by the IDF, but those were things that rogue soldiers did, maybe, okay? Maybe, okay? But a lot of those things have been pretty much confirmed. What I'm trying to say to you is that those things are all possibly war crimes. So what I'm trying to say to you is that it's too many rogue soldiers doing things that aren't sanctioned by the IDF. And there has to be some kind of accountability that the IDF says, we did this, this, and this, and this. There's too many like, oh, we might hold them accountable. Oh, we are going to, but we haven't yet. Oh, this might happen, this might happen. There's too many ifs, 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 and buts, and buts, and buts, and we're gonna do something, but we haven't done something yet. It's it's too much at this point. There has to be, it's hard, it's it's hard to tell you that accountability. It's hard to focus on telling them what social media, how they're disciplining them when they have a whole. Well, I'm not talking about social media. I'm talking about like the Israeli press. Like what I'm saying is the, there needs to be some articles from the, like the times of Israel where like the IDF spokesperson or the IDF prosecutor has spoken to like, there's so much journalism in, in Israel and put out a statement saying we dealt with such and such soldier who was brought forth you know, with these act about these act uh, with these accusations against them, and this is what we did to them. This, like, I mean, these accusations the are all purpose. public. They're all the journalists are bringing forth these accusations. There's been documentaries. There's been articles. There's been tweets. There's been tons of stuff written about this stuff. So now the IDF prosecutors and the IDF lawyers and the IDF spokespeople need to answer these and say this: we've done X, Y, and Z about this. And when was the last time you saw Age Group release an article about saying they did X, Y, and Z? Age Group is a T organization. IDF is supposed to be better than a T organization. 
IDF is supposed to be the most loyal army in the world. They're supposed to be better than that. IDF's a bunch of 18-year-olds recruited. Every single 18-year-old who lives in Israel goes to the IDF. No matter how... So you're like, they're a bunch of 18-year-olds, so they're not supposed to act moral? They're immature still. Okay, so that's your excuse. So they're allowed to desecrate religious articles and loot people's homes and dress up in women's lingerie. And... My cousin was unalive in the war to a T group. I'd be perfectly fine with him pissing on an article after it. If his friend okay. died. Well, I, you know what? That's, 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 that's totally disgusting. So have a nice day.